Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to Fantasia for today. We're going to be jumping into another session of Epic 7L today. Got some more update content for you guys. And boy oh boy are we starting off strong with a 5 star Moonlight Hero recruitment event. This is always here every single year for the past couple of years to uh, celebrate the global anniversary of Epic 7. The Dash Pass event was actually just a celebrate the general anniversary of Epic 7. So yeah, for Global, they always do this 5-star Moonlight Hero Selector. Now you can actually get up to see Phantom Politis using this event. So nothing super new like Harseti is available here, for example. However, see Phantom Politis, I mean, up to her, it still includes quite a few really strong units. This event goes live in a few hours whenever your server times will reset. All right. Anyway, moving on though, to celebrate the end of the dash pass, uh, we actually get 110 free Covenant summons to go on top of an already generous anniversary. The conspiracy theories have rolled in, and Lua is going to be the new ML5 that's going to be having a rate up very soon. Balance patch adjustments are going to be going live in several hours as well if you don't want to miss out on the gameplay featuring some of these characters, especially more. Be subscribed for that. Arena season's gonna be resetting as well, which is kind of good. They also are adding a couple of features here. So a quick battling replay feature. Um, so that seems to be quite interesting. I, I don't know if these two are separate things actually, but the uh, quick battling could have used improvements from the previous season, the one we're currently in right now. And then the replay features would be kind of nice for people to be able to tweak their defenses and potentially um, help uh, kind of iron out any flaws in them. It might make defenses harder to beat, but in general, I really hope they retweak how arena climbing works in terms of points so that people can't abuse the system like they did in the previous season that we had. Right, so moving on here, we also have a new exclusive equipment for Specimen Says, which is very exciting, one of my favorite ML5s. They're also going to be rerunning the Advent Side Story, and this is a great way to get substat change stones. If you don't know what those are and you're newer to the game, if your piece of gear doesn't have a substat that you want, let's say you're missing some crit rate on a piece of gear, but you have some flat HP, you can get these stones and modify in uh, these stats that you want, and you can reroll those stats up to a certain amount, uh, and it depends on RNG. But anyway, moving on here, we also have some UI improvements, including apparently the connecting animation change. Are we going to see a different ROS run? <laughs> Also, there's going to be a mailbox and setting UI improvement, so I can't wait for the mailbox. I think that could use a little bit of a revamp, especially for some quality of life adjustments. Uh, we also get Crow, Holy Sacrifice, and Mui, and Circus Fantasia drop rates, but hold on on those guys. Let's skip those for now. We have Emma Lua coming in with Troublemaker Crozette, and we're going to dive into her kit very shortly. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the update content, the nitty gritty details. And starting off here, besides the one minute summary, we actually have information about the new arena season. So the grit season is going to be starting actually right after the current pursuit season is ending. There's not going to be a preseason period or anything of that sort. And of course, we have all of the frames that go with the rankings that most of us here probably don't care about. Most of the things are staying the same with the arena season. We'll get to the changes in just a bit, but currently the battle pass still looking pretty good. You can get some some pretty nice gear sets from this as well just by playing. Now getting into the gear, which I assume most of you guys are excited for, it's actually going to be a resist set this time around, so you guys know me. I'm going to be very happy with this set, but I think most players can actually utilize pieces like this even if you play faster or more aggressively. So. All these pieces will come with pretty ideal substats, actually. I know there's going to be effectiveness on the weapon. There's really no better substat to have here than that. Um, and then on the uh, necklace, same situation. Effectiveness is really the only other percentage-based uh, stat line that you'd like, um, besides, you know, maybe going for flat defense or flat HP or something of the sort. Uh, effect res on the ring is beautiful, and speed on the boots is, well... Uh, couldn't ask for more. Now, all of these stats here are going to be random when you enhance them, so good luck on the enhancements, uh, but I really do hope that you guys uh, are able to utilize these pieces. There's certain units that can actually use both effectiveness and effect resistance, so by throwing these pieces onto those units, you actually get more value 
right? You see, some sometimes people play with like resist and effectiveness Harsetis like mine. Uh, DDR traditionally had both effectiveness and resistance. Things like Ocean Breeze Luluka, Angel of Light Angelica, Solitaria are just a few examples of units that can really benefit from hybrid builds. Again, not always viable. It's really meta dependent, but you can definitely catch your opponents off guard with stuff like that. All right. Moving on though, some arena changes that are pretty notable here. Uh, from the one minute summary, I was a little confused about this, but it's clarified here. There's a replay feature for quick battling matches in arena. And so I guess if you try to sweep your opponent's teams, you can at least go back and look at the footage to see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted for you to actually get the win with the second sweep if you're trying to go for a quick um, burning of flags. There's gonna be bonus victory points that are based on consecutive wins, right? That we used to get from, you know, getting a little win streak going. That's actually gonna start varying by league now, and I'm assuming the higher you go, the more bonus points you will accrue, which will help people with climbing. Now, the increase and decrease in victory points after battle will also now vary by league. I'm, again, I'm not sure why this wasn't implemented before, but it also depends on the point difference between you and your opponent. So if you're fighting a really high-ranking opponent and you're not as high-ranking, um, then you will actually lose less points, I'm assuming, kind of like RTA. Uh, and if the gap is too big and you win, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna end up getting a ton of points either, right? You'll increase rather slowly. But, yeah, rankings will also now not be displayed with individual leagues, but instead with, uh, overall rankings from champion and above. So instead of seeing, oh, you're ranked, you know, number 500 in champion, now you're gonna see, like, oh, I'm ranked 10,000 overall, right? From champion up to legend or whatever, um, however many players are there. All right, and then they also added a uh, ending for the arena schedule, but that doesn't really apply to us right now, so uh, we will keep on moving. The Avan side story is going to be back. Nature's Decline and Decay is actually a pretty good way to gather the substat change stones, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we will go ahead and make a video about that, I think, relatively soon once, once we get a team figured out for it. Uh, if you guys are down for that, let me know in the comments down below. Next up, hero and artifact balance adjustments. Uh, nothing really notable here except one thing. Uh, I believe there was a small change to Ruel here. Yeah, see, Ruel, it says the effects and skill description for Ruel's um, ascending, a uh, light ascending before awakening have undergone slight changes since the previous preview. So before she just had the revive and invincibility, but now uh, she's going to get the effect that at the start of the first battle, it grants the spirit lord's protection to the caster. Um, this is, I, I believe they just included that with the before awakening, so that, uh, yeah, you didn't just get it after awakening. I don't really know what the huge change is here, but yeah, aside from that, everything else is going to be pretty much the same. A lot of people are going to be looking forward to the great Mortelix. So again, if you want to see gameplay footage of him, be sure to stay subscribed for that. Uh, there's going to be some details on the recall, so once the update goes live, I might actually make a video showing my hero recall to, um, to give you guys an idea of what to expect if you're kind of afraid of doing it, or if you're a newer player and you kind of don't know what's going on with it. Um, I'm going to be recalling and trading him in for a new uh, ML4 star. The cool thing about this is that you're going to get everything back, everything that you used, including EXP, runes, skill enhancements, uh, any imprints you may have. They actually give you these uh, meteor shards, which are great. They're like generic imprints for any four star. And they also give you back however much friendship that you had accrued with him. So that is all fine and dandy. But uh, the important thing is you actually get a four star Moonlight Hero Selector. And judging from this picture here, uh, yeah, so you can actually um, you can actually get Wanderer Prince, uh, Wandering Prince Sid, which is absolutely amazing because he is the newest MO4 to be added to the roster. Uh, yeah, you cannot select Covenant Hero, so you can't just get any 4-star. It has to be an ML4 4-star, but I'm sure you guys have a unit that you really want that you don't have yet, and so you have the spare aux slots. Go for it. Okay, moving on, we have the uh, Artifact Recalls. This is pretty important for RNLs and for Butterfly Mandolin. So these two artifacts here, you can recall them. They'll give you all copies of the artifacts back if you, uh, if you have them enhanced like this, for example, I believe. And so, yeah, see, if you have RNL that's limit broken, they'll give you back all the copies, give you back all the EXP, all the gold you use to enhance it. So if you want to, you know, take it apart and kind of spread out the love, if you accidentally, you know, merged a couple RNLs in the past, maybe you only have a plus 18 one, probably best to keep it separate so you can, you know, put the artifact on two different units instead of on just one with a 1% higher chance of proccing. 
So something to keep in mind. Anyway, we're gonna keep on going and now we have some exclusive equipment changes too. Uh, keep in mind during this period uh, of about two weeks, I believe, yeah, so about two weeks until November 6th or 7th, depending on time zone, uh, you will actually be able to trade in any of these uh, exclusive equipments for their alternative, like the newly buffed replacement form, right? So you can trade, uh, you can actually trade for any of the three that you'd like if you have one of them. So that is something to keep in mind if you own any of these units. Right, especially Elena and Mort, those are more popular. Um, but if you happen to have Melissa, she also got a few changes too. Okay, so next up, we have uh, one new exclusive equipment, and it is for Specimen Says. It's actually a really good one as well. Not only does it give him more attack, which is fantastic for his damage purposes, but now his S3, Light Storm, uh, instead of getting the 100% defense penetration when attacking a stunned unit, it's now attacking a stunned or a sleep unit, so DDR just got even more stonks, right? Any unit that can put the opponent to sleep is now going to be viable to use with Spez, so you guys know. We're going to be bringing in Spez into like almost every game now. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, do keep in mind, Empyrean Ilanov does still counter him and prevents the full defense penetration. So I um, might want to be wary of that. Anyway, moving on here, they have a few other tiny improvements and adjustments. Uh, they have, of course, their packs that they want to throw out there. But apparently the title screen UI is going to be improved. Looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Mailbox and settings UI, which we kind of talked about, kind of got a glimpse of in the one minute summary, is also going to be changed. The loading animation is going to be changed. I really hope it's going to be something like an upgraded Roz, running Roz, right? Give him like super buff legs and uh, hopefully... <laughs> Like, his legs get more and more buff the longer you wait. That'd be absolutely fantastic. I would love it for, for them to lean, lean into that uh, meme. Anyway, uh, certain battle animations will also be adjusted, apparently. So, the uh, start of battle animations, the start of waves of enemies, right? And the start of a boss encounter. So, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what these look like. It could be pretty neat uh, if they were implemented well. Uh, or if it's like just like, oh yeah, hey, we removed like 10 odd pixels from this, then uh, it won't really be as exciting. Alright guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the new ML5 Lua that's going to be added to the game on November 7th. So, uh, many of you guys actually, I saw on the last official preview, uh, you guys wanted me to try doing an official preview for Smilegate, and while this is not an official one, I can say that we can give it a shot right now, so let's go to it. Hellion Lua is a 5-star Dark Elemental Ranger with high health and can increase her effectiveness further through her imprint concentration. Skill 3, Lua's Challenge Grants challenge to all allies before increasing defense of the caster for two turns. Decreases buff durations of all enemies by one turn and has up to 100% chance to provoke for one turn. When 20 soul is consumed, ignores effect resistance. Challenge. After counterattacking, when the target is a hero, deals additional damage equivalent to 8% of the target's max health. Dispelled after the effect activates, and increases speed of the bearer for two turns. Skill 2, Lua Squad. After being attacked by a hero, increases combat readiness of all allies by up to 10%, and makes all allies granted with Challenge, Counterattack. Skill 1, Lua Attack. Attacks the enemy and has up to 100% chance to provoke for one turn. So, taking a look at Lua's kit here, it's actually a pretty comprehensive kit. Uh, I know, looking at it, it's really simple, it's really straightforward, oddly, and uh, it gets right to the point. So yeah, taking a closer look at what her actual kit does in terms of synergy, we can see that her skill 3, Lua's Challenge, not only gives herself a good defense buff, right, to go along with her high health, uh, she will be... 
to stay alive and be pretty bulky, but she also ends up stripping the um, buffs of the opponents, right? Decreases the buff durations by one turn, which essentially means you can have her go first and you can dispel immunity off of your opponents. They can't buff stack with protection set with barriers and uh, all that stuff to protect that immunity from being stripped. It's probably going unless they 15%, but they can 15% if you ignore resistance and use soul burn, so keep that in mind. Now, not only does it decrease those buff durations, but it will provoke everybody on the opponent's side for one turn. This is huge, mostly because the fact that getting provoked so early on means you lose that initial first turn, and you lose that huge wave of momentum that you have going into the fight. Now, the scary part here is that she actually gives everyone on her team, including herself here, it says all allies, this challenge buff. Now, when you have a challenge buff, every time you attack, right, with the counterattack, uh, you'll deal additional damage to 8% of the target's max health. This will only happen once, it's a one-time buff, it will get dispelled, and it's replaced with a speed buff, we'll get to that later though. This 8% of the max health is pretty strong, okay? If you know how Daydream Joker works, it scales based on the target's health. So the tankier the unit is, the more health you're going to be uh, taking away from them, the more damage you're going to be dealing. This also makes it so you can't punish squishy units. So if you're attacking this, like, a squishy unit, 8% not going to be that much, maybe a few hundred points of damage. If you're attacking something like a 40k HP Dragonbride Senya, that's thousands of damage that you probably uh, don't want to be taking there. So uh, do keep that in mind, it's going to be really effective against tankier teams, but 8% is 8%, and you can still kill with this, because it scales with the max health, not their current health, okay? That's the challenge buff. Now, anyone with the challenge buff will counterattack together, all allies with it will counterattack together, as long as Lua gets attacked by a hero. So she will increase the combat readiness of everybody by 10%, and she'll allow everyone to start counterattacking. All four units counterattacking is 32% of the target's max health. That's not even including the actual damage they'll be taking from the skills of the units that are counterattacking. So that is insane, right? Keep that in mind. That is pretty good. Now, the other thing is, if you weren't dead by then, you will be soon, because not only does she push up combat readiness by 10%, she gives everyone afterwards, after that uh, challenge buff is dispelled, a speed buff for two turns, allowing all the units to kind of quickly come and follow up and uh, finish you off, right? Kind of surprisingly similar parallels to actual RGB Lua, where she would reset your units for, you know, their skill cooldowns, right, by a turn, uh, and then uh, she will come in and give everyone a speed buff. That's what she did originally in her kit. This is kind of the same. You still lose your first turn, but you lose it to a provoke this time, and uh, you can still get, you get a speed buff um, for your entire team. So her skill one is going to synergize. It just brings the whole kit together. She's going to end up provoking uh, all units all the time. I don't know what ideal build you can go with her here. Speed seems obvious. You can definitely go with speed, right? Uh, go before everybody. And, and provoke everything. You can also have her go a bit later in the draft if you build on a slower maybe counter build already. Uh, she could be pretty decent in terms of provoke locking people. Right, they attack her, she counterattacks, provokes them, and then next turn they attack her, she counterattacks and provokes them. You can actually get cheeky little wins with that. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. In terms of artifacts, Spatial Temporal Fan does come to mind. Lua's artifact is pretty good for stealthing maybe a squishier DPS unit. Uh, imagine a really hard-hitting squishy DPS unit that's stealth in the back, no one can hit them, and then they get the, um, they get the challenge buff, they counterattack, oh boy, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt quite a bit. And the fact that they these units can all counterattack without being hit themselves is huge, right? You can abuse a lot of things. Like, a lot of units have uh, things like combat readiness gains on their S1, so not only are they gonna increase by 10%, they might increase their own combat readiness by up to 10, 15% even. Uh, if you have something like a hand guy, Ocean Breeze Lulica, another support unit on the team, they could push up other units on your team when they S1, and uh, it's gonna be a cascade, uh, just a snowball effect, right? of damage that you're going to be doing to your opponent. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, that, those are my thoughts on Lua here. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I think she's going to be pretty decent. Whether I summon for her or not is really up in the air. I don't have enough mystics to pity, but we'll see. With that being said, though, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.